The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our SBR, SBL uh, webinar session two. I am Fahir Kapasi, the Education Manager for ACCA in the Middle East, and I'm, I, I'm joined by Dr. Konstantin Kiritsis, or as we popularly know him as Dino in the region. Obviously, Dino's is, um, you know, is a quite a known name across the Middle East region, as well as, um, you know, Central European markets. And he's also a ACCA SPL tutor guru um, and, and has done tremendous amount of work in the, in the area of SPL, as well as supporting ACCA with, um, you know, actually developing the SPL. So um, without wasting any sort of further time, we will get cracking with today's session, which is part two of our, you know, preparing for your SBL exams in September. Now, just a couple of housekeeping rules before, you know, I, I pass it on to, to Dino for, you know, so he can take us through the entire session. It is going to be an hour long session. Um, the slides will obviously flick through as, as uh, you know, Dino presents and speaks through them. If you find that you're having any technical issues or, you know, if you can't hear him or if you can't see the slides moving, usually a good idea or a technique that sort of works is, you know, you log out and you log in via the same link. Um, and, and hopefully that should be able to fix the issue with you. If the problem continues to persist or if you're having technical challenges, then you do not need to worry. We will be sending out a recording of this session as well today. You Obviously, we have a dedicated Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. I would encourage all of you to make use of this opportunity. So even while Dino presents, if there are any questions that come to your mind, you know you can use the questions panel to your left-hand side on the top end of your left-hand side of the screen, uh, and you can start throwing in your questions. We will do everything we possibly can to answer all your questions towards the end, um, you know, in the dedicated Q&A session. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Dino on and hand the hand the platform over to you, Dino. So over to you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. This is session number two for SBL. And those of you who uh, tuned in about a month ago in the July session know that this is a series. It has two two sections. So I would urge all of you to also have a look or listen to the recording, watch the recording, whatever you want to do of July as well. And this is a, a, a very important session that would probably help you and, and, and enhance your chances of passing this very interesting exam called SBL. First of all, I hope all of you are well and healthy. I think that's number one. That's the number one priority. And that's uh, more important than anything else, I think, in life, our health, our families. So hope everything is fine. So let me just start uh, by, by, by showing you. Let me just give me one moment here to share. Here we go. So I'm sharing my screen and I will go to the agenda. So I'll talk to you today about, of course, I'll, I'll give you a summary of what we've done in session one. I'll talk to you about an exam technique when dealing with questions, how to create an answer plan, how to use the models, which is a classic question. All of you always ask me which model to use. How do you answer, you know, uh, in, in having the models in mind? I have, I have a technique for that. Layouts because you will be asked to write in a certain layout. That's very important. Some writing tips and giving you, of course, real examples from the specimen papers. I've chose a couple of questions at the end and also stressing the importance of the mock exam. And I think all of you who are listening today uh, should remember, and I didn't mention this in July, that if you don't do a mock exam, it won't really be you know, helpful because you won't uh, have that feeling of, of time and managing the time. So make sure you try to do a mock exam, at least one of them, to get an idea of the pressure you have in terms of the time that you have for this exam. Okay, so a quick reminder for those of you who are actually studying hard, and I always kind of uh, start with uh, the basics. You remember, you have four hours, and within those four hours, you need to plan. I'll tell you how to do that. 
100 marks, 50 marks to pass. A good point to again remind you in this last session of mine is that you will get a lot of pages of information, but this information is good. It's good that you have information. The more you have, the more, inf you, the more ideas you may get. The, the drawback of that is that you need more time. I understand that, but I will give you some tips and tricks on how to go back and forth. And also the fact that there's only one scenario, there's one case and that's very positive. You don't have to look at, you know, or switch your mind to two or three different scenarios. Uh, so it's one story, one story on one uh, business, probably in one industry. So that is the idea behind the exam structure. And for those of you who remember, and some of you who are actually tuning in for the first time, I've developed a flow chart, which you can also have a look at uh, on ACCA's resources. And you can actually go over, you can hover your mouse on these areas like I'm doing right now. You can see my mouse and uh, you can click on most of the areas here and you can watch a video that's on the ACCA resources section. OK, and we can share the link with you at the end or, you know, you probably have it from the previous slides. I did include it in the slides. So this is the way to structure your 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 content, because there's a lot of content. And I always like to start with corporate governance, stakeholders, why the ethics board, all these main points, which would lead you into the yellow areas, which are the analysis parts of a company that would lead you into your SWOT and then your red areas, which are growth and green are implementation. On the left side, you have the skills you need and how do you read this? How do you study this? I think the most important way to do this is that you take this flow chart and you look at each area, how they link together, how the areas link, but always ask one question. Why do we have corporate governance? Why do we have the code of ethics? Why do we do integrated reporting? Why do we think of stakeholders? Why do we think of risk? Why is that important? Why do we do, for example, why do we have a mission or a vision? So if you ask why on all these areas, you will understand what to use when a question comes up. And I know it's difficult, but there's still plenty of time to go over and there's about 80 to 100 areas here. Some of them you know, I'm sure you know SWOT, I'm sure you know Pestel, but the important thing is to know when to use it, not to tell someone what it's just all about. So I will go over this if you want me to at the end. I also went over it uh, during the first session. As I said, the logic, it's more holistic. You can see how these areas interrelate and that's how I've covered it. I, I made it into different colors to make it easy for you to understand. And let me just go over that one once again, here it is. And then you can see a slide on how that's used. I can, I can talk more if you have a question. So to manage your time, remember the exam is coming up in a few weeks. It's almost in, in about a month, a little bit less than a month. So you need to organize your time. When you get the information, you have to spend about 45 minutes to you know, read and plan. OK, don't don't make the mistake and start writing. You need to plan. Remember your project management chapters, which say that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You have to plan your answer. You have to annotate. You have to highlight. You have to check the important areas that would take you some time. And four hours in total is a good amount of time. So I would want you to spend 45 to 50 minutes on annotating, making sure you know, you know what the case is all about. Then you would probably have to, of course, within those 50 minutes, first you read the background, okay? The background is usually one, one page, half page about what the company is all about. What is the company selling? Where is it competing? That's about a page, that's step one. Then you scan the exhibits. Don't start reading the exhibits. Have a look at them. Try to make some notes and say, oh, we have minutes from a meeting. We have a, a spreadsheet here. We have an article from a magazine. Make sure you know what they're all about. Don't read them thoroughly, though. You scan them. Scanning is actually just having a look at them, okay? Maybe for a few minutes. And then you go and read the requirements. So you've had a look at the exhibits. You know a little bit of what they're all about. You haven't read them, but you read the requirements. What is this case asking me? And then you go back and of course you read the exhibits carefully. 
and then you start planning your answer and writing up. So step one, to remind you, check the background. What is the case all about? Step two, scan the exhibits. Just check a little overview. Then you read the questions, the requirements. Then you read the exhibits in full, total, annotating, and then you start planning and writing. So basically, that would take you about 45 to 50 minutes to, to go to step five, I would say, and then you actually write, and that's where you probably have a better management of your time. So don't just read uh, and, you know, whatever you want and, you know, with, with no organization and start writing. You also have to take the questions one by one in the sequence they're being asked. And I'm saying this because in many of the examiner's reports, and I'm here to just to advise you, uh, it does say that the, 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 exam, the examining team may uh, have a sequence of events happening from question one to question two to question three. So it's important for all of you not to skip to question three and then go back to one because it would not make sense. Have to follow, there, there could be a time, uh, you know, a, a time logic. This happened and then this happened and then this happened and you have a change of role. So take them as you see them. Step one, step two, the questions, requirement one, requirement two, okay? You can, you can ask me any question you want on this. I'm just revising some of the main points. Why do candidates fail? Okay, this is a classic slide and I put everything on one of them. So basically, you guys don't extend, in many cases, your answer. You fail to extend, which means writing enough so the examining team or the markers can find information. I know you know the answer. The, it, that's not the point. The point is to explain and you know rationalize explain why so you you have to write more to get 10 12 15 marks you can't write one paragraph i know you know the answer but it's not enough so try to extend by using examples information from the case try to link some model so you need to extend that's why people fail second reason people fail is that they don't apply the theories you may mention Pestel or Five Forces or the value chain or SWOT, but you actually have to apply that on the case. Don't tell us what the model is all about. We don't really care about that. We care that you use it appropriately. So don't tell me what Five Forces is all about. Go and do Five Forces. Check the power of suppliers. Tell me more about uh, the power of uh, the, the threat of substitutes. That's the idea when we say apply. And it's in all examiner's reports, the application of the models, okay? Not just writing them. You're not gonna get any marks for writing them. And I have a technique coming up to tell you more on that. So extend a little bit more, you have to do that. Number two, apply the model, don't explain it. Refer back to the case. The reason you have 12 or 15 pages is that something is going on with this company. So you have to go back and say, blah, 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 there's a threat of substitutes. For example, people can, uh, comp companies can have competition from online as you know, the information from the magazine suggests, which is in this area. You have to link that and explain why. You can't just talk in theory, try to use information from the exhibits, talk about the people in the case. John, George, Mr. Uh, Smith or whatever, there's names in there. So go back to the case and apply the information from the exhibits, okay? Uh, even the names play, play a role. That means you, you've read, you know which area you're using. So extend, apply the model or theory, refer back to the case. It's all about the case and the company, the company's name. And don't forget, you will get marks that have to do with the skills. And I gave you a one hour session last time in July. So please, you know, download it or check it out because I talked a lot about the skills. How are, how can you get skills marks? And the, the marker usually, the way they do it is they check the technical answer first, check your answer in technical content, and then they go and check which skill should we look at? And then they reread your answer to see if the skill is there. So they kind of correct your answer twice, not at the same time, okay? So they would, they would check the technical content, which counts for 80%, of course, of the exam. 
and then they would go and check the skill. So if it's skepticism, they go back and say, let me see now if this answer is skeptical. Let me see if this answer is good in communication, whatever the skill is all about. So always explain, make sure you use, you use the, the, the skill that's appropriate, the one that you're being asked to. So after this kind of uh, update and, 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 and summary of what we talked about, let me go a little bit further and give you a nice little system to use when you start writing. This is called the six W's. Uh, so who am I? You will have a role in this exam. So you are a consultant working for a big consulting firm. What is your role? You have to know your role. Who are you? Because the tone and the way you write has to have that tone. If you're a director, you have to write as a director. And I know the problem that some people say, well, I've never been a director. How do I write? Well, the point is you have to kind of assume, you know, it was more professional, addressing people in a more professional manner. So who am I? Number one, what, why, why is the issue being asked? Why is the issue an issue overall? Now, what's the problem here? That's the second why, the second W. What is the skill I need to use? I have to have commercial acumen, be skeptical, communicate well, evaluate or analyze. There's one of the five skills. What is the skill I have to think in, in, in order to write my answer in? Who, do I, who am I writing this to? Am I writing it to the board? Am I writing it to a friend of mine? Am I writing it to the CEO? Am I writing it to the new joiners? What is the layout? Letter, I'll talk more about this today. The, the letter or the slides or the, the report or, or a briefing notes. What's the layout? And which model can I use? Okay, because maybe you can use a model. You will not be asked about a model specifically, okay? And I, go, I usually get questions on this, but you will be asked usually uh, to, to, to you, you, you would be asked indirectly. You're not gonna be asked to do Pestel, but you may be asked to check the environment. So your mind should go to Pestel. And I have a technique for that. So let me summarize here. Who am I? Why is this issue an issue overall? What is the skill? Who do I have to write to? What is the style or light layout? And which model can I use? This is the way I tell my students to think. So every time there's, there, there's a question, you know, put this on the right side, write it down or use this slide and ask yourself. And if you cover these areas, you know, when you finish, you, you actually are, are you're probably gonna do very, very well because you may have a wrong layout if you don't, or you may not know the audience, you may not be you know, addressing the, 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 in the professional manner you should. So that's a simple system to use. I'm, I try to make it simple. There's a lot of systems out there. I know you're reading or you're studying from a number of resources, uh, but you know, this is kind of simple. Who am I? What's, what's the, why am I being asked this? You know, what's the layout? What's the skill? It, it makes some sense to remind all the students about what they need to do in every requirement, okay? So I hope uh, I'm not going too fast. If I am, please let me know. I will slow down. So here's two slides now on a technique I've made in order to remember, you know, which model to use. Now, these are difficult slides, but as we're going to the exam now coming up, it's important for you to understand this. I, did, I just wanted to put everything on two slides. So apologies if it's a long slide, but you'll see what I mean. So you're not going to be asked about Pestel or Five Forces. You will be asked to evaluate the environment, to assess the environment. So what would you use? I tell my students, when you see that word, logically it would be Pestel or maybe Five Forces or maybe both or maybe parts of each. So someone's gonna ask me what happens if I can use two or three areas from Pestel and a few areas from Five Forces, that's fine. You can do that because they're not asking you to actually do five forces or pastel. They're asking you about the environment, okay? And imagine yourself in a, a real life scenario. You are sitting in a, in a boardroom and your partner, your, your CEO is telling you, we need to analyze the, comp you know, the competition or the environment out there. What would, you, what would you do? You would use five forces or maybe pastel concepts or ideas from Pestel, but you're not going to say, let's do a Pestel. Let me tell you what Pestel is all about. They're not asking you that. So in real life, you would use areas of politics, environment, technology, but talk about substitutes. So that's why 
what I have done here is given you words. So if you see the word environment, my first pick, you may, this is how, the, how to think about the model, would be Pestel, and the second one would be Five Forces. Okay, you can use either one. It all depends on the information you have. So, you know, depending, I cannot tell you exactly, you know, which one to use. It all depends on the requirement, but usually the, that's, the, that's the model. If you have the word competition, this is a bit more specific. So it would be five forces because five forces is more on competition. But of course, you can use some areas of pastel, right? Because you're not going to be asked to do five forces but you'll be asked to evaluate the competitive environment or the profitability of the industry, the industry competition, okay? If it's something on a country, you can use Porter's diamond. They're not gonna say, do the diamond, or check out this model. You know, that, that would be a giveaway. In real life, you have to check the national advantage of the country. And if you remember, if you want to check the videos out from that flow chart I told you, which is on ACCA's resources, I explain these models and you can see how to use them. But if it's a country, if there's a, a, an issue on a competitive advantage from a nation, like let's say Dubai or let's say uh, uh, Saudi Arabia or Oman in the Middle East, then you have to think of Porter's Diamond, okay? The four elements of, of Porter's Diamond. If you have the word performance, you can use the balance scorecard, you can use Baldridge, you can use CSFs. I know, I don't want to confuse you here, but if it's open and the word performance come out, you may want to evaluate the performance of, of a portfolio. Like Apple has the Apple iPad, the iPhone, the iPod, the iThis, whatever. So, you know, you have to check that. I would use BCG to evaluate the performance of these, of a portfolio, which, you know, but if you want to, if you, if you want to check the performance, maybe in just financial terms, you can use a financial performance, you know, the, the, the financial basic ratios to check how the company is performing in financial terms. It all depends. This is a bit more open, but I tried to make sure you, you go through these areas and maybe you use one of these models or you could use one of them or benchmarking. Evaluation of strategies. If you want to evaluate what the company should do, usually there's two basic theories with the word strategy in it, you know, a bit more clear, okay? So you have to think about them. I'm not saying that these are only the ones, but these, this is to think about them. Generic is cost differentiation, okay? So evaluate if the company is selling low cost or they're differentiated or they're in a niche market. And SAF is when you evaluate the suitability, accountability, and feasibility of a strategy. So should the company acquire another company? Do the SAF model. Should the company uh, merge? Do the SAF model. So to ask these three questions. So that's when you evaluate. Position is easy. SWOT, if you have a position analysis, what is the company doing right now? What's the position of the company? The business position. SWOT would be very useful. You can use elements from others, but SWOT would be fine. Portfolio, as I told you, BCG. I didn't mention this one in a different context. Value would be value chain, right? Directions for growth and soft matrix, which has to do with diversification, new market, new product, right? And stakeholders, I'm sure you remember, you've studied Mandelo's matrix. So if the word stakeholders come up, you're going to use Mandelo. You're not going to be asked to do Mandelo's matrix, but you may be asked to use a model of your choice, even though I think you won't. I think, you know, assess the stakeholders, evaluate them. So what are you gonna do? Mandelo. So what I want you to do in these two slides, and this is only one slide, I have one more, which is a bit difficult, is know the words. So when I teach my students, I say, evaluation, what would you use? And they tell me, strategy, SAF, got it. Position, what would you use? SWOT, got it. Environment, what would you use? Pestel. Competition, probably five forces. That's the idea to learn the models because you're not going to be asked to do a model. You're going to be asked a word and you have to think of the model. Okay, so that's why I have two slides. This is one. It's not very difficult. We went over it together, I think now about 10 words here. Okay, and then we have one more slide on the remaining elements. So risk. If you have the word risk, I always go over the risk process, where you, which is what? The four steps, identify the risk, 
assess and evaluate the risk, risk strategy, TARA, if you remember, and then monitoring. So basically, I always, every time I have a risk issue, I always go over this. I have to identify it. I have to assess it, maybe through a heat map, okay? And then maybe find a strategy for it. Should I transfer, avoid, reduce, or accept it, TARA? So that would be my risk management process. The word risk will immediately take me there. Social responsibility, it's good to think about the integrated reporting concept, which I'm sure you remember from other ACCA uh, uh, exams as well, or even Carroll's theory. If you never heard of it, that's fine, you know, but it's, it's a good model. I like showing it to, to students, which says that the company has four responsibilities, the ethical one, the philanthropic one, the economic and the legal one. But if you want, you, you can check these things out when you look at the slides, okay? Corporate governance arrangements. This is actually one of my favorite. There's no, there's no theory here on corporate governance, but you may be asked in your exam to evaluate the corporate governance arrangements of a company, okay? Now, people get confused here. What should I do? What should I look at? So the basic things I would look at would be to look if there's a board. Is the, does the company have a board? A board is very important. Why? Because they supervise, they lead, okay? Do they have non-executives, which is another topic of, of which you need to know. What is a non-executive? Someone that is independent, scrutinizes the, 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 the board strategy, okay? Is, is there, and, and they have to have no conflict of interest. They have to be, have expertise. So non-executives are very important. I would also check if the chairman and CEO are the, are the same person because it's better to be separate, to segregate the duties. Do they have committees? Are they diverse in expertise in people, men, women, religion? And do they have a code of ethics, for example? So these are some corporate governance arrangements. If I see a question, okay, any question, evaluate the corporate governance arrangements or the corporate governance elements, that's what I would look at. So to remember the, that phrase, and it's not difficult, the five or six things you look at. If you think of marketing, marketing mix, the seven P's theory, product, price, place, promotion, people, processes, and presentation. Okay, you may not be able to remember all the P's, but you should, okay? So that's the P's theory. Why would you market online? I think this is an old fashioned question these days, but it's still in the material. You know, why would you go and do e-commerce? And of course, now with COVID, we all know how important that is to be online, to be present online, to market online. So there, there, there's a theory called six eyes. You can look it up and there's six, the, the, there are six elements on the benefits of going online. The word culture, classic, the cultural web, amazing theory. You should know the cultural web. You can use elements from that if you have the word culture. You're not going to be asked to do the cultural web. You'll be asked about culture. Outsourcing is a bit more straightforward. You don't have to use a matrix. I actually use Harman sometimes to show what's when something could be outsourced based on the matrix. I'm not, I don't want to tire you, but Harman's matrix helps us assess if something you should do, you should do it on your own or you could outsource it. So that's the outsource. But you can have pros and cons of outsourcing. Why would you outsource something? Because you want to save money, but of course that, that will give away confidential information. Pros and cons, pros and cons, it's good to know. The word change, very important. You can use Lewin's theory. There's a three stage which says the following. If you want to change something, it takes phases. You, you need steps. You can't just change it like that. You have to you know, unfreeze, then you change it, and then you refreeze it like, a, like an ice cube. That's the model I like. But you can use Puppet. What is Puppet? Puppet is checking the areas of people, the operations, the technology, what Puppet is all about to see if the company is ready to accept the change. The word big data, very popular in SBL. And I want you to make sure you know the three V's theory or the elements, which are velocity, variety. Just re re remember that big data may be featured uh, and volume, sorry, uh, volume, velocity, and variety, because you have a lot of data that are coming in. We're getting all this information from emails, attachments, customer inquiries, and we have to organize this big data. That's the whole idea behind big data, which means we have to manage the knowledge we receive from our customers, from our information, to use it to put it into a cloud, 
which is very useful these days because we can store more information. However, there's a limitation because people can steal information, cybersecurity, you know, what are the pros and cons of this? And we can use the information to analyze our customers, our preferences, when do people buy something? So that's the big data, you know, have some information. There's a, some good articles on ACCA's website, the technical articles for SBL. I urge you to have a look at the latest ones, the ones from 2019 and 18, which do have information on cybersecurity, cloud systems, and big data. So remember, remember to go there, give, give them a, a cu couple of good reads, okay? You don't need to, to know it by heart, because this is a real life exam. You're not going to be asked to say, what is big data in a big extent? It's good to explain the issue, but you know, how, how important it is, is it for a company to organize their data, okay? To analyze their information, their data they receive to do, to come up with innovation, ideas, and how to sell better and to serve their customers. That's the whole idea. Ethics and ethical decision-making. There's a model by Tucker, five questions to ask. Is it fair? Is it profitable? Is it, there, there's a little sequence there. You may want to use that. And finally, very important, I put that in, even though it's not a theory, it's a process. You know, what does a project initiation document, what is it? How does it help us? It helps us organize our project. It's the starting point of a project. So it's very important. And I know I, I took a little bit more time here, but these two slides, let me go back. This one, which is, sorry, this one here, the first one on the, on the, the keywords, I would know the words, okay? And then I would have to know which model to use. And th there is no right and wrong, okay? I do have a disclaimer. These terms do cover, do, sorry, do not cover all poss possible terms, but they are more, they're considered more common. So I think that if you know them, you will be better off, okay? So this is the first slide here again. And the second one is here, risk, social responsibility, corporate governance. That's what you would be, you know, you're going to be asked. So not all the words ever, but uh, very, very helpful. Very important to remember this exam technique I gave you from last time, from the last session, that anything that comes up in, in corporate governance, like, like board of directors, the reason we have committees, why do we have a corporate governance framework? Why should we have a code of ethics? Why do we do integrated reporting? Why do we have non-executives and, and why should they, there be a balance? All of these questions could be kind of answered and you could use words from this slide. This is a, this is a critical success slide for you. So I'll give you an example. Why do we have corporate governance? Because corporate governance ensures fairness, independence, responsibility. You can use some word. Of course, you have to explain them. It's a technique, but you have to know these words. I'm not telling you just to write them, okay? Why do we have non-executives? Because they provide better accountability, they have a better responsibility, they enhance the reputation, they have the, they, because they're independent and they help with expertise. Why do we follow Sarbanis Oxley, which is the American corporate governance code? Because it helps us be more fair, uh, it, it helps us with integrity, with better judgment, to follow certain rules because that's what it's all about. Why do we have a board? Because it helps us to run the company better, enhance our reputation. So the, why do we check our stakeholders? Because it's really responsible to do that. If it's very accountable because we, everyone should be happy. So this is a little technique I'm telling you. Any, almost anything, okay, in corporate governance, ethics, and these types of questions, you could use elements from this slide. So this is going to extend your answer, but of course, I'm saying this to you, I don't want to you know, be, be misunderstood, not just writing the word, but explaining, of course, what, what, what this means. So if you want to talk about non-executives and independence, you have to explain why that's important for them not to have conflict of interest, to provide the, you know, their, their own views without uh, being having motivations other than you know, do, do, doing, doing, doing their job. So, you have to kind of explain them, but always remember the slide. It's a technique, okay? So remember the first technique was the word that would lead us to the model. And the second one here is, this is a cr critical elements slide. Now, layouts. I have four or five slides on layouts. If, uh, and you can download these slides when we share them with you. So the layouts, you, you, if you have to write a report, quite obviously, uh, or a briefing paper, you know, to Dino from John, 
regarding or title, okay? And then you have to break it down in introduction, a couple of paragraphs, depending on the extent of the marks, and then you conclude. Now, people ask me, should I have an introduction? Should I write the word introduction? The answer is yes, you should write the word introduction. And if you do write the word introduction, then you must have a conclusion. How can you have a conclusion with no introduction? So you must have both and make sure you have the layout correct because if if the if the if the skill is communication you will lose marks if you don't okay and even if it's not communication the layout shows professionalism so you will receive marks by making sure your layout is correct you can't just start writing what what are you writing it's I, when you say the word report i ask my students what do we do now to dino from this date regarding all, all that information in the beginning introduction and you write something and then you continue with your answer so you can use the same layout for report and and briefing paper if you have a letter okay letter it's it, we don't really use too many letters these these days you know over because we have emails but you know people do still write letters and they send them in attachments engagement letters or whatever so it's important to always have the name and address of the sender and then the name and address of the recipient, okay? So you, you should write that down to make it clear. And then dear Dino or dear Mr. Dino, concerning, you know, what is it all about? Like a, like a, like a, like a title on that, like a subject, okay? And then you divide it into paragraphs. No need to have more than two or one or two or three, depending again on the extent. And then you can say yours faithfully or sincerely. People are not really picky there. Do not worry. You're not gonna lose marks if you write faithfully or sincerely i don't think there will be a big big issue there but you will lose marks if the layout is not correct and if it's not clear leaving spaces and most of you as far as i know are writing handwritten sbl exams still some people around the world are taking the of course the the uh the option which is offered now which is uh computer-based but if you're still writing, you know, handwritten, make sure you leave spaces for people to put their mark when they see it on a PDF scanned document. So with number one, let me go back, report on briefing paper. Number two, layout is a letter, okay? And I know there's a lot of info here, but remember, who's sending it? The person who's receiving it, dear, and then at the end, you gotta sign off. Now people, people say, what happens if I forget yours sincerely? Well, it's not correct. How would you sign off in real life? SBL portrays real life, real life scenarios. And you would, you would have to say thank you or you know, yours faithfully or whatever. Press release, this is a public relations uh, uh, thing that, that, that they do. A press release is an announcement. So for example, you can have a press release on the new uh, iPhone 12 is coming out now. I, I read something, I think it was on Bloomberg. So the, the new iPhone 12 is coming out. So Apple is going to release a press release, is going to give a, give a press release, which is a statement to the media so they can say something on that, okay? So it would have the time and date. So it would be, let's say, August 2020, okay? And then say uh, a press release from Apple. And then it would have, you know, at the end of the release, that, which would say uh, Apple is announcing the new iPhone 12 will be blah, 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 launched on whatever in September. Uh, and then at the end, P contact name Dino, whatever, or Dino Kiritsis, is my full name, a phone number, email. And you have to also have th that information signing off on that press release. So don't, don't be intimidated by this. A press release is a statement, an announcement that companies make and they give to the press because they want media attention. Okay, so let me go back. Let me just remind you, we have report and briefing paper. We have number two letters, okay? Then we have press release. We have a couple of more and we're finished. Then we have slides now and slides come with notes. So if you're being asked to make slides, like I'm showing you now, you need to make a box to show that there's a slide. And people say, come on, that's silly. No, no, it's good to have a slide. Draw the slide and write slide one. Uh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you, if it's a report, write report. And I know it may sound silly, but you have to be clear. Report, briefing notes, press release. It's gotta say that, PID, slide one, okay? You will lose marks, which are kind of easy marks if you want to ask me, by not doing that. So slide one, 
and then you write down the slide, which usually a good slide, and don't take my slides as an example, because some of my slides have more information than I should. But usually, when, when you have a, 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 you know, a, a presentation to do, it's good to have a, a, a short, let's say, um, not, not too much information in the slide, but you could have information in the notes page. What is a notes page? PowerPoint gives you the notes under the slide. If you made a PowerPoint presentation, and I know all of you have, there's a notes area, so you can remember what to say and 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 what you know uh, maybe a definition on something or, or or maybe something to 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 uh, to remind you of what you need to say when you present something. So the slide should have let's say two or three or four bullets, and then the notes could have how as many bullets times three. That's what I tell people. So usually three bullets would have like nine lines because you have three bullet areas and then nine lines of explanation. One to no one to three. That's the ratio. So when you make a slide, you're usually required in SBL to make, let's say, a couple of slides, two slides. That's that's the average. Maybe three, maybe one. But two, you know, slide one, notes under there, slide two, put it in a box, notes. Okay, that's what they want to see because we're trying to portray the workplace. We want to make sure we are developing people at ACCA that know how to do this if uh, their supervisor, their partner, their whoever, their manager is asking them. And I know it sounds simple to some of you that made a lot of these you know, presentations, but some people haven't made these. Okay, and finally, PID, what is a project initiation document? This may come up as a, as a question, uh, and usually the question could be, you know, why is it useful? Why do we have a PID? And the answer is, if you look at the contents of a PID, you understand why it's important, because it has all the information concerning the project, the goal, the scope, who's, you know, who, the, the, the project organization, the structure, the case, constraints, the stakeholders. Now, if you don't remember all of these, no worries. You know, no one's counting. There's PIDs that some companies use, which are a bit, you know, with less information, and there's PIDs with even more information. So there's no one size fits all, but you need to have elements, most of the elements in this slide, okay? So uh, make sure you understand why we use a PID, and that's why, uh, and that's how you will remember. It's the document that starts the project, that initiates it, and has all the information required to make sure that the project uh, is, is very well organized. People know what they're expecting, who are they affecting, who's the guy responsible, project manager, what's the case of doing this project, so on and so forth. So let me go back and let me go forward. So here we go. Remember, briefing notes and report. That's one style, one layout. Second layout, letters. Third layout, press release. Fourth layout, slides and notes. And number five would be PID. Okay, so I hope you're getting your questions in if you want. A few points on writing and then examples. Okay, so here we go. Remember to take the questions as they are provided to you. You know, requirement one, requirement two, do not skip. There's a reason sometimes in the cases they give you to, to take them in sequence. So don't skip. Start with one, one A, one B, two, two A, two B, depending on how it does. Make sure you don't overlap and repeat things. Make sure you prioritize and make sure you're professional. And I know it's difficult now, one month before almost to the exam, to, to do theory on this, but you know, I'm sure you will study. Try, try to make sure you're professional. When you write professionally for any, uh, for, for, within any context for any company, you're not going to repeat yourself, say the same thing over and over. So make sure you're clear, okay? Make sure you write the most important elements. Also, use short sentences, okay? Some people ask me because that's how you avoid any English problems. For those of you who are concerned with their English, I know some people may be listening and may be afraid of their English level because it's a global qualification. I have to tell you that ACCA does not correct English, so don't worry. You know, it's, 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 it's not an English exam in, in the sense of correction of English. It's an English exam which is addressed to global people in 180 plus countries. So what they want to understand is, you know, what you're trying to say. If, if, if it's not written correctly, but they do understand it, that's fine. 
So let's make sure you use the appropriate way for someone to understand what you want to say. But don't worry about, let's say, the spelling if you're right, handwriting it. Use short sentences. Make sure you check which exhibits apply to each requirement. This sounds difficult, but usually, usually, okay, I, I, this is not 100% correct, but usually one exhibit is, I would say, far more important for one requirement. And the rest could be used, yes, but not as much as one. So one or maybe two of them really can help you for one requirement. So focus on the one that's more important, but you can also use other exhibits to make points that are relevant, okay? Remember your audience, we said that earlier. Who are you writing to? If it's a director, it's gotta be more professional, more official. Use subheadings. I like it when students do that. They have a subheading. Uh, for example, if you're using five forces, just put the headings, power of suppliers. No need to explain it, but apply the power of suppliers in that industry. And then threat of substitutes, it's a heading, and then you write that down. So that's the idea. Subheadings make it clear for the marker, and the markers like that. Space and defining, even though the examining team and the markers have said that you know, you're not going to get any marks from defining, in some cases, and I tell my students to be honest, maybe to, to define if it's really short. So the word benchmarking, for example, maybe you can use a definition because you want to explain it in a report. So you can define that. You may get a mark, you may not, but I think it's better to have it there instead of not having there. But don't spend too much time on definitions. Avoid harsh language. Don't try to show off because you're a student. You're, you're writing in a context, you're a consultant. You, you know, no one knows the answers in business. We don't know. So make sure you try to avoid being sure. Don't say, this is the only way, the best way, and I have the only answer of this company, the only strategy. Don't do that. We're, we're students, sorry. So you have to say one of the most, or one of the best ways to, 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 to actually uh, to go to to grow would be to do this. However, you know, try to make sure you give a limitation as well, but also propose with a limitation. And as I said, introduce and conclude. As I said, there's there's only one case, which is great. So don't worry. And just check the time. So we're okay with the time. Give me a moment. Excellent. We're okay with time. 45, 48 minutes in. So it's only one case. And even though it sounds okay, I'm not trying to to be smart here but I know it's a big case, but it's one story. And by the time you go to the second requirement or the third requirement, you usually become better and more familiar with that. So it takes you less time to answer as time goes by, okay? In the beginning, spend time. Spend time to read well. Spend time to take notes and spend time to make an outline. And that's why you use 45, 50, and even more uh, if, if you need to. So let me go to an example now. I have a couple of examples. We can stop after one example and then we can go to questions. So, and, and, and then if we have more time, we can do more. But I wanted to give you an example. So this is an example from a specimen one. I'm giving you the theory now, okay? This is what we would need to have known to answer the question. It's on agency, okay? The word agency. As you know, what is agency? It's the separation, the separation of ownership and control. So I always give an example of Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo is a great player in football, and he has an agent, someone who does the job on his behalf. He's the owner, okay? He's the principal, but there's an agent because he plays football, okay? He doesn't run the business on a daily basis, but he's very rich. He has a lot of companies, and he has a lot of subsidiaries. So he has other people to work on his behalf. That's a good example of agency theory or agency relationship. It's the relationship between the owner, Ronaldo, and his agent. So why do we do this? Because companies grow and Ronaldo has to play football. So he has no time to work on, 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 on his businesses. Okay, And if he grows more, he's got to get more people. If you have a small company, you don't need an agent. Simple as that. But companies are big and you need people to run them for you if you want to grow. That's the idea. So because ownership and control, owner, Ronaldo, and who control is the manager, is there's a separation. You have to make sure you control that relationship with good contracts. And that's why Ronaldo 
pays his his uh, his manager very well. Okay, remuneration uh, as a contract. That's how you you handle this relationship. Everyone has a contract for something, and that's why they're accountable. Okay, so the relationship assume that the agent and the principal may not agree on things. So you have to make sure there's a contract, so they do the right thing when the time comes. And there's cost to do this. You got to give them money. You got to control them. You have to make sure they report to you. So that's what's happening with Ronaldo. Oh, I just gave you the theory. So here's the question now. This is from a specimen exam, okay, which I picked just to show you just one example, and I'll give you the, you know, what the typical answer, a, a big answer would be, even though students could, could write a lot less and pass. So the case requirements are as follows, and you will be told which role you're taking in each task. That's how it started. You are a non-executive member and chairman of the nominations and corporate governance committee, okay? Remember the role I told you. The recently appointed chairman of the rail company trust board has requested that you provide him with information re re relating to the governance of rail company and the roles and responsibilities of the non-executive directors. Okay, so that's a requirement now. Requirement, you have been asked to prepare a briefing paper. That's an alarm button, briefing paper, remember report, okay, to Dino from, I remember that, make sure you do that identifies i only put a there's a there's a b area just wanted to show you in which field you will get these questions so this is a company which was a rail company okay trains identifies and explains the agency relationship of the parties involved in rail company and discusses the rights and responsibilities of these parties so i remember the agency example of ronaldo so someone is working on their behalf so basically you got the idea now, there's people who are running the rail company, which was, and I'm not sure if you read this paper, it's a specimen paper if you wanna go and check it out, which was a government company. So the people who are running uh, and, and working as agents were actually accountable to the government in, in, in that sense. So that's eight marks to explain that, okay? Okay, and then professional marks would be, uh, sorry, to, 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 to be very communicative, to have communication skill. So that would be 10 marks, but you'll be getting the 10 marks by, write, but write, by writing one answer for eight marks. I don't want to confuse you. You would get 10 marks by writing the answer for eight marks, but if you have a good communication skills, you would get those two extra. So at the same time, you're being awarded the skill mark. Okay, so always going, okay, communication, that means good layout. It means good, good writing, not repeating myself, being clear, being persuasive. That's what communication is all about. So I will make sure I make my layout and I write well, I leave the spaces, I don't repeat myself, I'm not harsh. I got two already, if you do that. Now from the eight marks, which are the technical skills, you have to remember to use the exhibits, okay? And I'll show you the model answer and I don't want you to be intimidated because no student writes like the model answer, okay? Because I'm, I'm telling you this because people say, oh my God, you know, uh, I would never write like this uh, answer which was published in a, from the examining team or a past paper. Trust me, I wouldn't as well. It's impossible under exam conditions to write the way the examiner does. So relax, no worries. The point is to make sure you, you, you place the points or you have the points or some points to make at least four or five technical marks. That's how you pass, okay? So four or five marks from the technical and even one from the skill is a pass mark. It's five or six marks. Five is a pass mark out of 10. So I'm not saying, but that's the worst case scenario. So you can pass, so don't worry. But here it is, I did write it, I, I did copy paste it and actually made some, some, some green marks here for you, the green areas. So let's find the marks. Briefing paper, FAO by the way, because I'm using what the examiner did, is for the attention of, some people ask me that. It's very, uh, it's more, more professional, but it doesn't have to be. So it would be two, I would write briefing paper, two, rail company regarding or the topic agency blah 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 and then i will get into the answer and the, the answer for these eight plus two marks is two slides i have here now trust me 
No one would write two slides right now or students. It's very difficult. But the examiner has said, as I, as, as I say here, the ex always try to include as many marks as possible to make sure that when you go back and check the, the model answer, you say, oh, I did write this. So they have more, okay? So relax. But it would be, the layout would be correct, okay? So it would be a rail company uh, is what would be called a government body. So I would start like that. And then of course, at some point, therefore its organizational objectives would already be determined by the political leaders because it's a government entity. Ultimately, it is the responsibility of the chief executive. So who's accountable? Remember we said agency theory is who does the work on behalf of the owner. I said Ronaldo and the agent. So here it's the government, you got it? And by the way, this paper had a structure which showed you exactly who reported to the others, okay? The main parties involved uh, are the, you know, the government, the Rail Come Trust Board. So I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but make sure the layout is correct and make sure if you haven't read, the, read this case, it's, uh, it looks difficult, but if you did read it for one hour, trust me, some of these things would make a lot of sense to you, if not everything. So I'm not gonna read it. I don't wanna waste time. I'm here to answer your questions coming up now. So this would be two, two uh, slides on the answer, further aspect, taxpayers, whatever. There's a lot of information here. As I said, more than required. And then at the end, the skill, you, the, the, the marker would go back to check if the layout is correct, if it's clear, if it has spaces, paragraphs, any repetition going on, and that's how you would get the skill. So if you look at the two slides, they, they, they look intimidating. I'm sure you would have done the layout and I'm sure you would write two or three paragraphs, if not six or seven, okay. But two or three, do not underestimate yourselves. I think it, it would have been possible for you to, if you read this case to do quite well. So what I want to do now, I gave you a lot of information. We have the, uh, the team. I want to see if you have any questions. So let me just uh, go back to check myself. I'm just checking the, the screen. Uh, so uh, Tahir, I, I want to kind of go back to you to, to ask you if you have any questions coming up. And if not, I can continue or give you some of my questions. Brilliant, uh, Dino. Thanks a lot. We have been having a couple of questions coming in. Um, a lot of the, them have been quite generic in the sense uh, we're going to be receiving the slide deck. Yes, you will. After the session, the slide decks will be emailed to you. Some of them, interestingly, are mentioning they've missed the previous um, session. and How can they get hold of the recording? So you would have definitely received an email. If you received the email for this session, you would have received the email for the previous session as well. You do the same thing. You follow the joining links. You um, fill up your details, and then it will take you straight into the recording um for the previous session now there's one technical question here for you dino and and it's from a student um named Bumit, and Bumit has asked how do we differentiate between analysis and evaluation are there any specific skills that are needed for you know answering the two separate excellent question and the, the there is a little bit of overlap but the way i explain it to my students is the following when, when, when you have the word analysis, you need to explain why, 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 you know, why is something happening? If you're analyzing a financial statement, you're seeing some numbers and you say, this may be because of this, because of that. So you're explaining why. If you're evaluating, I always start with pros and cons, pros and cons, positive, negative, positive, negative, advantages, disadvantages. What's the value of that for, for, for a company, okay? Now, both of these have why in it, but in one case, I'm giving reasons, basically. And the other one, I also want to have pros. I, I want to evaluate it. What is good and what is bad? What could happen that would be positive and what could be negative? And I think that's the best way to kind of clear a little bit in your mind the difference because I know it's a bit overlapping. I hope that helps. And that's the way I explain it to 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 my students. Thanks, Dino. And um, there's another question typically around the um, exam strategy, basically, and, and it's coming from a student called Vaishnavi. So Vaishnavi is asked, is there a particular sort of approach in the way the questions should be answered, or rather, is there a preferred order 
or should they be skipping certain things should they should they be reading the exhibits in the entire case first or you know should they start with reading the requirements etc okay let me go back uh to one slide i noted and i'll show my screen again and the the best way to deal with the exam is right here let me show i'm showing my screen now correct yes uh -huh. yes yeah i can see it okay so here here what i'm saying is oh, sorry I, just, I missed it again so here it is so here what, what i'm saying is that you need to spend about 45 to 15 50 minutes reading annotating and planning do not write your answers yet okay and and what do you do within within these 45 or 50 minutes number one you have to read the background of the case which is a short paragraph or two or half a page about the company it's not a lot the the background is usually very short for example it's a rail company that is led by blah 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 and here's a structure and this is what's going on and there's been some problems so it's half page you read that first then you have to scan the exhibits don't read the exhibits scan them have a look at them and say okay this one is about this and put your note on it write it down this is about that this exhibit is about blah 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 it has a spreadsheet it's about i think it's about fraud this is so just scan them a few minutes then you go and read the questions like i the, the one i just read to you so it's about and then you highlight agency theory report the main areas okay then you go and read the exhibits so you read them carefully the articles spreadsheets the exhibits is where all the information is and then you actually start writing making an outline and starting to write that is the best way to save you time and the important thing because I, I heard this in the question do not skip the 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 uh the, the questions start with question one one a one b then you go to question two don't skip and start with the, with the last one there may be a timeline which may have the information you're writing wrong okay right thanks you know um another quite interesting question coming in from a student called swarnima and swarnima says uh, what is an ideal plan for preparation in the last two weeks so um you know being about typically two weeks away from the actual SBL exam, what should be the plan of action now? What should be the areas that they should be focusing on? Okay, but what, let me, I'm going to a slide I wanna show you. I've actually broken down the areas of the, right here, give me one moment. So let me just show my screen again. So here, here are 100 areas. I, I, I broken down SBL in 100 areas. So I would go over, you have plenty of time to do this and have a, 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 a typical, you know, a note, a, a, new, a new notebook where you have to write your own, in your own words, all the, all the 100 areas, which could take you three or four lines for each. So it's not going to be too much, but that's, you know, what I would do in a couple of days. So why do we, what, what is corporate governance? Why do we have it? Why it's important? Agency. What is transparency, accountability, whatever. Then you go to stakeholders and you go to risk management. So there's two slides here. Let me show you two slides on all the topics that, have I, that I have kind of pinpointed for SBL. Now, by doing this, by doing this, you're organizing your thoughts and you've done all the theoretical parts in concept because you're not going to be asked theory, but you have to know if, if they ask you about the value of a nominations committee, what is a nominations committee? If they ask you about the value of NEDs, what, what are NEDs? What do they do? But if you go over these 100, you remember these areas, you got it. So you have a new notebook now with about you know, three or four lines for each one of these 100 areas. And that's what you study from, okay? If you don't get it, go to your books and your manuals to make sure you kind of get the idea. That's how you study. Your books are your reference points. But going towards the end, you gotta know 100 areas. And then you start solving not only questions and answers i don't really believe in the questions and answers of you know simple questions or you know taking one question because you're avoiding the whole case so i would take big cases and i would do either two hours or four hours because you need to do a mock at the end because if you don't do a mock i i'm honest with you you won't be able to understand how demanding this this exam is 
in terms of time. So after you do these 100 areas, it's good good for you. Maybe you, you, you can also use the, the flow chart right here to make sure you combine them. So these, these 100 areas are all here in a, in a flow. So you know which relates to the other. There's a logical sequence here. And then just do past exam papers and take four hours, you know, maybe even push yourself to three and a half hours to push your time. You know, shut down your phone. If you want to pass, sorry, you, you, you have to study. And this is the time to do it. After September, when, when you finish, there's plenty of time to relax and do whatever you want to do. But we have to push ourselves now. So you have to do, if you do a couple of these, which have a lot of questions, and you go back and check the model answer, what did you write, check your marking, then you would know what to do. That's what I would say. So 100, 100 areas, explaining these concepts, knowing what to use, go back to my slide on which model to use with each word, the techniques I gave you, organize your thoughts, and then do mocks. And if you do two mocks, I can guarantee the third one will be a pass. It's impossible not to pass if you do two mocks and you really study you know, well. Now, the, the, there's one problem that, that I know may come up is you don't know how to mark your writing. People forget about this. And it's important not just to do it, but someone like me or someone, which I cannot do for you, but I'm just saying someone who knows can say, okay, let me check this out. This is this mark. I would give you five marks here, three marks there. So if you can't do that, you may again not have a good understanding. So show it maybe to someone who knows, maybe your tutors, you know, call them up, or I'm sure someone who's, who's you know, completed ACCA or is a, is a, is a, is a, you know, is a new uh, trainer or something, someone who knows. And that, that's going to give you an indication if you cannot do it on your own, or at least you can't find those marks. I hope that helps, but that's what I would do. There's still plenty of time. I'm honest with you. There, there, there's still almost a month to go. And when, when, when Tahir and the team in, in, in for a, for, from ACCA you know, and I were planning these, these sessions, we wanted to make the first one in July and the second one today so as to give you the time to follow these again, go to the ACCA resources, maybe even do the, the uh, ethics and professional skills module, which is great. And if you haven't done that, that will help you with the skills. Plenty of time, take the next weekend to do that. And then start day by day for a couple of hours. I know no one studies for the whole day. It's impossible. You know, you know, relax, you know, if you can go out, I know it's difficult times, but make a program and you follow it two hours per day, one hour, three hours, and then you're building with the mock and then you'll do very well. That's what I would be doing. Excellent. Thank you, Dino. And, and you pretty much within that question answered another question that came up around how do we sort of, you know, mark ourselves or how do we make sure. And and in addition to, to, to your comments, what we also generally as ACA tend to recommend to students is if they're doing anything out of the approved content providers or if they're solving a mock exam or any of the resources available on ACCA's website, there's always the marking guides available on there. You know, they're a good, they're right. a good skeleton for or, you know, a, a point of reference for students that can, you know, be quite handy and useful in terms of giving yourself that the credibility, giving yourself the marks that you deserve against the answers that, that you've, um, you know, constructed. So you always have the model answers as well as the, um, you know, the marking guides, which can guide you how many marks can you get against a certain requirement. And if you've written certain points, covered certain points, what are the sort of marks that you need to give yourself? Excellent. Um, one more question, and I think it's, it's, it's possibly from a student who is taking the SBL exam in either Oman or, or in Kuwait, because we've recently made a decision of, uh, you know, switching um, exams as remotely invigilated in Oman and Kuwait. Everywhere else, these exams are staying as paper-based exams. So they are going to be doing the SBL exam for the very first time um, on a computer. So, that, so the question is, are there any tips or tricks that we should be bearing in mind when we do the SBL exam as a computer-based exam? There, there, there's, um, I think the best thing to do when you're taking it online is to check with the, uh, an online platform on how to make sure you, uh, uh, you organize your time online. I'm, I'm just trying to find something from my slides here. Give me a moment. Uh, and I, I will tell you because there was an examiner's report on this and the best thing to do according to that report, let me just bring it up, give me a moment, is to, to, to actually use a platform 
to make sure you know how to copy paste. For example, you can copy paste something like the question and put it in the area you're writing to save time instead of going back and forth and you know minimizing the documents. So overall, what, what would I tell you from the platform? Try to find a platform. And of course, ACC does have you know samples on this. There's videos on this in the ACC resources to help you understand what you need to do in tips. There's videos on this, which will probably be better than me explaining them. But there's a lot of things you can do, which you, you couldn't do very easy when you're doing handwriting. So for example, you know, you know taking copy paste some areas and putting them where you want them to, you could do that. The questions, for example, and you can follow that better. There's an there, in the examiner. I found it in the examiner's report, 2020. Uh, candidates, for example, uh, often copied material in from the task requirements, both the requirements and content of the exhibits. Copying in the task requirements had the advantage that candidates did not need to keep looking at the requirements exhibit and may have helped uh, keep them more focused on the tasks. So there, there is on page five of the examiner's report, March 20, some, some tips on how to do that. I would urge you to write them, uh, or sorry, to check them out. There's a two or three areas that, 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 are, that, are, that, are, that are quite important. And, uh, and also the resources that we have on, on, um, from, from ACCA itself on how to do this. So I hope I just gave you, I gave you an indication of where to look, but it may be easier for someone who's more tech savvy to do it online. It all depends on the person, but it'll be good before you go to check that out. No, don't leave that for the last minute. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Dino. And and, and just to to add to a couple of you know uh, add a couple of points to what you've said, existing. And a lot of what Dino was saying was also around the familiarity piece. So ideally, what changes in in the form that you do your exams is really just the platform. Uh, you know, in terms of your learning outcomes, your objectives, what you're examined on does not change. So everything that you've done and you've learned so far is pretty much still valid, except the fact that instead of writing the the answer physically on a piece of paper using a pen, you would be expected to do that on a actual computer or a desktop, and you'd be typing your answer. Now, the only thing that can really help with this or overcome or cross this bridge is practice. So we've got the you know the the CBE practice platform on our website. That's also available as a resource for you to be able to practice we've got the CBE specimen exams so I think a good thing for you then is to do to go in and firstly start familiarizing with the exam platform secondly any question practice that you sort of uh, put in um, you need to do that on the actual platform so you need to use the CBE practice platform which is an exact replica of you know our, our exam platform and that will help give you that kind of confidence, give you that kind of familiarity, you know, you'll be more sort of hands-on and, and it'll be a more user-friendly experience for you. So go in and, and from now on, anything that you do, any question practice you do, make sure you do that on the actual, you know, exam platform or, or the practice platform, just so that you become more and more um, hands-on with it and more and more confident in, in being able to use it. Right, so so Dino, um, just conscious of time here, and, and it's good to see we've seen uh, we we still have all pretty much all the attendees, you know, logged into us. A lot of positive comments coming on. You know, students have expressed uh, gratitude. They've said thank you very much. You know, we found these sessions very useful. They're in fact quite curious to know, you know, where do you teach? Um, how can they follow you? And I'm pretty sure Dino will share. Um, you know details his his contact details at the end of the session if you wanted to reach out to him um, I've known Dino personally for for a long time he's a he's a great guy always ready to help you know people mm -hmm. always ready to help support students he's got a soft spot um, for for students so you know feel free to reach out um, and then he'll 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 do whatever yep. he can to to sort of support help and support you I'm just I'm just putting putting up my uh, my if they want to get in touch with me they can find more information. Uh, we don't need to talk more about. Uh, I'm sure they can find out what I do. I'm online as well and everything. So uh, please feel free to get in touch with me and hope I can be able I, I'll, I'll be able to help you. Excellent, Dino. Any any sort of last final comments before we conclude the session? Well, I, th I, th I think the most important thing is that uh, I want, I would probably boost your confidence by saying that there is a lot of time still. There's many people, uh, a, you know, in the world who, who have started recently because the exam uh, will be taken, of course, in, in September in most parts of the world, not everywhere. 
and uh, and uh, you know they've been contacting me and they have been starting recently in July so there's plenty of time if you have a, if you follow a good program and it doesn't have to be a, all day i mean and I, I don't really believe in someone studying all day it's impossible we're all you know we're human beings we have to relax watch a movie you know go out if you can but if you make a program, let's say I'm going to do the first, let's say, 20 areas today. Let me just go over these and finish the areas and then start doing, you know, uh, allocating, let's say, a, a one early morning, a, a mock exam on your own and, and checking the time, at least understanding how much time that takes. If you organize your time to make my last point, there's plenty of time until, you know, I think the uh, second week of September where you take the exam. But you just have to program yourself. It's like a project. And remember, we have project management in, in, in this course. So if you follow the, your project management knowledge, you will be able to organize your thoughts well and, uh, and try to, 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 to answer in common sense. Try, try to avoid thinking about the theory. I think people can probably pass and get good marks uh, purely with common sense. I'll be honest with you, because it, it simulates the workplace and no one in the workplace you know, would probably tell you, uh, you know, about a theory, they would answer, uh, okay? Theories are helpful for our answer, but we don't talk about the theory before we answer. So just be common sense, be yourselves, and believe that you, you can do this. If you reach SBL, you're good enough. So just take the time to, 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 to get on with it, that's all. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dino. Uh, it's, real, it's some really positive comments to sort of end the session on. And, and personally, I'd like to thank you on behalf of ACCA Middle East and on behalf of all our students, you know, for everything that you've um, committed to the amount of time. We know you're quite a busy man and for you to be able to commit to, you know, um, us and, and commit your precious time to us is, is quite a big thing. So thank you very much for all your support. I'm thank sure, you. you know, and, and it's validated in the comments that I keep getting from students that, you know, they've really enjoyed these two sessions from you. They look forward to sort of, you know, hearing more from you in the new future. Thank you. Thank you. But thank you again to all the students that have, you know, thank taken you. the time to attend the session. All the best for your upcoming SBL exam. And bear in mind everything that Dino has shared with you. Keep the tips on the top of your head and you will all, inshallah, pass them with flying colors. So thank you, everyone. Have a good um, good day and we'll see you soon. Keep in touch. Take care. Good luck. Good luck, everyone.